You've been watching the U.S. Ambassador to the U.N., Nikki Haley, announcing the U.S. withdrawal from the U.N. Human Rights Council. She called the UNHRC a hypocritical and self-serving organization that makes a mockery of human rights. She said the council is motivated by political bias, not human rights, and she called the council biased against Israel. I want to get back to my guest, Dahlia Fahmy, who joins me live via Skype uh, from New York. She's an associate professor of political science at LIU Brooklyn. Um, Dahlia, talk to us about the reasons for the U.S. withdrawal from the council and what kind of signal this sends to the rest of the world. So under the Trump administration, we have seen a full embrace of authoritarian leaders from North Korea, most, uh, most recently, the Egyptian government, even the Saudi government. Now, Egypt and Saudi Arabia also sit on the Human Rights Commission, but are not receiving the critique that she's lobbying, le levying against Cuba and Venezuela. Now, it's interesting that the U.S. is standing here today in her statement as on a moral platform of they need to withdraw because they are the real defenders of human rights. While, as in your previous report, we know that 2,000 children um, in the past few weeks and 11,000 children in total have been separated from their families, which led the UN human rights chief to call this policy unconscionable most recently. So the U.S. is finally finding itself in a position where it's e even being attacked by this council. Now, in March, there was supposed to be a U.N. Council Commission going into Israel to investigate human rights violations. Israel refused to cooperate. And so we're seeing the, not just the politicization of the council, but the use and misuse of the council. Yes, there are several countries that do sit on the council that are not really in keeping with the ethos of the council, namely countries like Egypt and Saudi Arabia, but they're not receiving the same critique because they are increasingly becoming U.S. allies as is Russia to a certain extent. Now, in her final part of the statement, she calls on like-minded countries who refuse to actually come out and call for reform. And here she's talking about European countries. What we have seen in the past few months is this an un unwieldy critique of European nations that continue to embrace multilateralism and international cooperation, primarily on the Iran nuclear deal. And so this critique um, and that the U.S. would not let it stand signals that the U.S. thinks it stands on a moral high ground, when increasingly in the past few weeks we have seen that even the United States of America has become a human rights violator. Mm -hmm. All right. Dahlia Fahmy joining me live from New York. Thank you for your thoughts today.